Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, MOS Live. This, we're here for Virtual Planetarium Exploring Space. My name is Talia. I use she, her pronouns, and I am going to be your moderator today, which means I'm going to be monitoring um, all of the stuff coming in through the Q&A box. Um, if you are joining us via Facebook or uh, YouTube, we are so happy to have you, but I'm afraid we're not going to be able to see your questions or your comments. We are very excited that you are joining us. Um, and if you would like to see captions, we have those available as well. You just click on the CC button and uh, click show transcripts and you will be able to see those captions. Uh, but that is all I have to say. I think it's time for us to meet our educator for the day. Thanks, Talia. Hi, everybody. My name is Katie. My pronouns are she and her, and I am going to be your main educator today. Uh, as we talk about one of my favorite planets, which is the planet Venus. Now, specifically, we're going to be talking about a couple of actually several missions to Venus, both in the past as well as the present uh, or the future, I should say. Um, Venus is a planet that has been explored fairly little compared to a lot of the other planets, especially by uh, NASA in particular. Um, but they did just announce this past summer that there will be two new missions uh, sent to Venus by the end of the decade. So this month we've been talking about um, upcoming missions that are set to launch this year or in the near future, but these two missions are going to be launched by the end of the decade. So it's a little bit farther into the future, but it is very exciting nonetheless, especially when Mars seems to get all of the love these days. It's nice to see uh, Venus um, getting some attention as well. So I thought we would start today by just taking a look at the planet itself and talking about the planet before we get into the specific mission. So I'm using a program called NASA's Eyes, uh, which is a free program you can download online. Uh, I think there's a web version as well. So you don't actually have to download anything, but this program is really cool because it has all of NASA's missions um, that have happened or are happening, and it even has some in the future as well. It doesn't have them by the uh, like the end of the decade time, uh, unfortunately, but it does have a lot of future missions. So we're going to use it to just fly up close to the planet. So right here and we'll get a nice close look at this planet. So Venus is often called Earth's sister planet, but really the only thing that Venus has in common with the Earth is its size and the fact that it's a rocky planet. So in our solar system, we've got the four inner rocky planets and the four outer gas giants. Uh, it goes Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars for those rocky planets. And that's really where the similarities end um, because Venus is pretty uh, pretty intense on its surface. Right now we are only looking at the top of the Venus atmosphere because it is covered in clouds. Um, Venus's atmosphere is a hundred times as thick as the Earth's. So you actually can't see the surface at all. Um, and because of this really thick atmosphere, Venus is also the hottest planet in the solar system. So even though it's not the closest uh, Mercury is, it is the hottest because all of those gases, specifically carbon dioxide, uh, is very good at trapping in heat. So this is called the greenhouse effect, and we experience it here on Earth. That's why we're able to have liquid water on the surface of our planet is because our atmosphere is trapping in just enough heat to kind of keep our temperatures consistent um, across the surface of the planet. Now, Venus has this, but to the extreme, so much so that Venus doesn't really experience any kind of seasons um, or really much change from day to night uh, at all because its atmosphere is trapping in so much heat. And it's on average between like 800 and 900 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface of Venus. So it is the hottest place in the solar system. 
Um, it also has a ton of atmospheric pressure. So on Earth, our atmosphere is, you know, all the gases all around us is constantly pushing on us. And so the atmospheric pressure on Earth is about 15 pounds per square inch. So if you think of like your own body, every square inch uh, is experiencing close to 15 pounds of pressure from the atmosphere. We don't notice it because we are pretty used to it. You know, we have evolved this way. But on Venus, it would be a hundred times that pressure. It'd be similar to uh, being 3,000 miles, or excuse me, 3,000 feet uh, below the ocean surface on Earth. That's the, the pressure that you would feel just standing on the surface of Venus. So not a great place to land spacecraft. Um, we, it's even difficult just to see the surface itself. So I'm going to overlay this texture here. So this is a map of the Venus surface. And the way that this was obtained was using radar, which is essentially, uh, you know, an orbiter of some kind, like the, um, uh, Magellan spacecraft, for example, um, would have sent light down to penetrate the atmosphere of Venus at, all the way down to the surface. And then it bounces back and transmits information about the surface. So it can tell you about elevation um, as well as get it the opposite if there are any like craters or valleys or things like that. Um, and so we can accurately map the surface of Venus. And so this is what it looks like. It is thought that there are many volcanoes. Well, there definitely are a lot of volcanoes on the surface. I guess the question is more of whether or not they are active today. There is a lot of evidence that suggests that there are volcanoes on the surface of Venus that are still active today, but you can see uh, some of the remains or the, the geologic evidence for them by looking at this map here. So anywhere where you kind of see a light spot with a dark spot in the middle, that is going to be a volcano. So they're kind of all over the surface of Venus. And again, there is some evidence to say that even today, these volcanoes are erupting across the surface. All right, so now I would like to talk a bit more about uh, the missions that have been sent to Venus in the past. And Talia, have any questions come in so far that I should answer before we move on? We do actually have a question. We had one person asking um, if you could uh, repeat the name of the program that you were using. Yes, this is called NASA's Eyes. Excellent. Um, and another person was wondering exactly just how far from the sun is Venus? Uh, that's a good question. So the Earth is 93 million miles from the sun. Venus is something like, is it 50 miles or 50 million miles? Is it more than that? That sounds about right. I think it's like two thirds of the distance that Earth is from the sun, which would put it at between 50 and 60 million miles. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so yeah, it is closer to the sun. Um, it is still within the habitable zone of our solar system. So around every star, there is this area called the habitable zone um, where it's at just the right distance that liquid water could exist given the right conditions. So in our solar system, there's actually three planets in the sun's habitable zone and it's Venus, Earth, and Mars. But the atmosphere plays a huge role in whether a planet can have liquid water on its surface. So Venus's atmosphere is just way too thick, traps in way too much heat. Uh, any water would just boil away instantly. Um, and then Mars has the opposite problem where it has an incredibly thin atmosphere so any water would also boil away from the lack of pressure, but uh, it also there is trapped as ice as well. And we had um, one more question. Somebody was wondering, is this greenhouse effect contributing to global warming? So maybe um, is this, in fact, this is the reason that Venus is so warm and is it the same effect that we hear about uh, making Earth warmer? 
Yes, so that's a good question. So the greenhouse effect is the same phenomenon. So it's it's basically gases that let heat in, but don't let them out, essentially. So that is, and carbon dioxide is a very, very good greenhouse gas. Um, so that's responsible for Venus is extremely hot temperature. It's got so much CO2 in the atmosphere. And it is also a major reason why the Earth is warming is because of the increase in CO2. It's just that the origins of these gases are different in both of these circumstances. Um, so Venus's would have happened probably from all of its volcanic activity throughout billions of years, whereas Earth's CO2 increase is caused by human activity, um, especially like in the time since the Industrial Revolution, we have just seen the levels of CO2 skyrocket, um, which is directly correlated to Earth's rising temperature um, or climate change or global warming. So yes, it is the greenhouse effect that is causing both of these planets to increase their temperature. Um, but the source of that CO2, or at least the the biggest source, I should say, or the most impactful source is much different um, on each of these planets. We actually have a whole bunch of questions coming in now. Um, <laughs> we could take a, a couple more. All right. Uh, so, you know, one person wanting to know, is this incredible temperature, is that why people don't live on Venus? Is that the only thing causing us to uh, maybe not want to go hang out on Venus? Or are there other reasons? There are some other reasons. Uh, you definitely, you know, 900 degrees doesn't sound great, but that that pressure, that atmospheric pressure would just instantly crush you. Um, you wouldn't be able to survive that. Uh, it would be very difficult to create something that could withstand those pressures and temperatures. Also, the Venus atmosphere, like the clouds in the atmosphere are made of sulfuric acid which is very poisonous to humans. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that Venus could kill you. <laughs> and so we don't think we're gonna be sending humans there uh, anytime soon, but definitely we should be sending some more robotic spacecraft because as crazy as it is on the surface, it's fascinating. Maybe one final question before we move on. In this image that we're looking at here, Venus looks very red. What accounts for that reddish color as we're looking at it now? Yeah, so this particular picture, this is, so radar doesn't actually send back any kind of color. Um, so this would be like an added color. The actual color of the Venus surface and sky is kind of more of like a yellowish white um, color from different gases in the atmosphere. Uh, and I mean, you can see from, if I take away the surface, like it's upper atmosphere, it looks very yellowish and white. The surface is probably uh, kind of like a similar color, maybe more of a reddish color. Um, if there's any like iron or anything like that in the soil that might have oxidized or there's a lot of um, volcanic, like remnants too. So any kind of hardened dried rock from volcanoes um, probably wouldn't be hardened though. It might still, some of it might still be molten. Um, but yeah, this is not the actual color of the surface of Venus. All right. Uh, if we are good to go on questions, I'll pause again before we end the program to take some more, but I do want to switch us on over to a few slides that I have. So the only missions to ever have actually uh, landed on the surface of Venus were, were the missions that were a part of the Venera program, which was a Soviet program from 1961, I believe, to 1984. There was a series of space probes sent to Venus. 10 of them successfully landed on the surface and the only ones so far to have ever done so. And they didn't stay on the surface for very long. Um, I think the, the longest time was just under two hours 
um, for one of them. And then I think most of them were closer to like 20 minutes to an hour because of the, the high temperatures and pressures. But this whole program was really exciting because it was the first human made device to ever enter the atmosphere of another planet. We usually think of Mars when we're talking about exploring other planets. So a lot of this, when I was doing my own research into um, this particular, the history of this program, I was surprised to know uh, that Venus had a lot of the firsts. So first human made device to enter the atmosphere of another planet. It was also the first um, spacecraft to make a soft landing on another planet, which basically just means a successful intentional landing rather than like a crash landing. Um, it was also the first spacecraft to return images from another planet's surface, which I will show you in just a moment. Uh, also the first to record sounds from another planet as well as performing high res, uh, high resolution radar mapping scan. So a lot of that radar has been done by uh, Venera as well as um, other missions as well. Now these spacecraft primarily measured the wind speeds and surface temperatures. So that's part of the reason why we know that Venus is so hot. We also know that it has incredibly high wind speeds. So Venus doesn't rotate very quickly. Um, it, its day actually takes longer than its year because it's so slow. But the atmosphere, the winds in the atmosphere is moving incredibly quickly. Um, I think the, the atmosphere circles the planet like once every four Earth days or something like that. So compared to the Venus day, uh, they are moving very quickly. So this is these are the various landing sites on top of a map of Venus. And this is a model of what the Venera spacecraft or the Venera lander specifically looked like. And so now we could talk about, uh, oh, actually, wait, I want to show you some pictures first. So these were the first images returned from the surface of Venus. So this yellow picture down here, that is a colorized version um, of these photos. The atmosphere is thought to have a bit of a yellowish color to it, but it's probably not this extreme. And you can actually see more of what the color of the surface actually is in these pictures. It's darker, um, probably from all of the uh, volcano remnants on its surface here. So these are pretty cool. All right, so now some NASA missions. NASA has sent several probes out to Venus, but never to land on the surface. So the Da Vinci mission, which is upcoming by the end of the decade, will be the first one by the United States to have a, a, a lander actually, uh, hopefully successfully land on the surface of Venus. So if we start back in the 60s, so around the time of the Venera program, we have the Mariner mission. So Mariner 2 and Mariner 5 happened in the 60s. Um, Mariner 10 happened in the early 70s. These were all flybys of Venus, but they were the first successful missions by the US um, to explore Venus. Then we have the Pioneer Venus probes. So one of these was an orbiter, and one of them uh, went through the atmosphere of Venus to take measurements. We have Magellan. So this is an actual picture taken by the Magellan orbiter of one of the volcanoes on Venus's surface, Sapis Mons. And then we have a few spacecraft that were not actually meant to visit Venus, but they did on their way because they actually used Venus as a gravity assist um, to head out to these planets. So we've got Galileo in the top left on its way to Jupiter, uh, Saturn uh, or Cassini on its way to Saturn and Messenger on its way to Mercury. They all stole a little bit of help um, from Venus. And then Parker Solar Probe, this is a current spacecraft that is on its way to the sun that has performed flybys of Venus and taken some data, even though its primary purpose is to study the sun. 
All right, so now we can talk about the upcoming missions that are meant for Venus. We just talked about a lot of flybys and gravity assists and things like that. So Da Vinci stands for the Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigation of Noble Gases, Chemistry, and Imaging. This is going to be an orbiter and a descent probe. So it'll have two parts to it, um, and they can talk to each other. Now, this is an artist's rendition of what it will look like for the um, descent sphere to enter Venus's atmosphere and safely land on the surface. Um, it's going to have to be extremely well designed in order to withstand Venus's extreme environment. Um, but on its way down, as well as the orbiter, they're going to measure the composition of the Venus atmosphere to learn more about its formation and evolution. So what made Venus have so many volcanoes on its surface? Like what happened? What is, uh, what, how has it changed? Those types of things. It's also going to look for evidence of a past ocean on Venus. So not sure if there ever was one, but it is going to investigate the surface to see if there uh, had been at any point in its history. Maybe in the past billions of years ago, Venus's atmosphere was not as thick and the surface was not as hot. And so perhaps uh, an ocean would have been viable. It is also going to take measurements of the different gases and elements in the atmosphere to figure out why Venus is a run runaway greenhouse. So what has caused it to build up all of those greenhouse gases? Probably volcanoes, but um, you know we want to learn more. There are also geological features on Venus called tesserae, which are kind of like Earth's continents, which means that Venus could have plate tectonics happening on its surface. Now, volcanoes on Earth come from Earth's plates moving around and uh, interacting with one another, but they're also caused by hot spots, which are just kind of build up um, areas that have builds up of, of heat and magma and a lot of pressure. And it's thought that a lot of the Venus volcanoes are hot spots or the result of hot spots. So it would be super interesting to know that Venus may also have plate tectonics as well. Um, and it's also going to host what's called the Compact Ultraviolet to Visible Imaging Spectrometer, um, which is going to make measurements of ultraviolet light. Um, and these observations might be used to determine uh, if there's anything that is strange in Venus's atmosphere that is absorbing ultraviolet light um, and other solar energy. So that is Da Vinci. The other one that was approved by NASA just this past summer is called Veritas. And this one stands for Venus uh, Emissivity Radio Science INSAR Topography and Spectroscopy. INSAR is a type of radar. And this is going to be uh, strictly an orbiter. So it's going to map the surface of Venus, again, using radar, that INSAR, a very specific type of radar. And it's going to determine what kind of geologic activity is happening, both present day and in the past. What exactly happened to make it evolve so differently from the Earth, which will be absolutely fascinating. I'm so excited to learn more about Venus's past. Um, it is also going to measure surface elevations over the whole planet to create um, these 3D maps. Um, and also it's going to investigate plate tectonics and, and volcanism and lots and lots of geological processes. Uh, and it's also going to look at infrared emissions from the surface of Venus so that it can tell what all of the rocks are made of um, using a spectrometer. So hopefully it will get some clear data back on that. All right, so that is what is upcoming for Venus by the end of the decade. It is very exciting. Um, I, I can't wait for these missions. So any other questions?
Yeah, before when you were talking about Venus's wind, you said it was, you know, the, the wind is the atmosphere is moving around faster than the surface because of the wind. We have a question, somebody wondering why if the planet is so hot, does it have wind? Yeah, so wind comes from moving air, uh, at least on Earth, right? The air that we breathe, if it's moving, then you get wind. And since Venus is, has so much atmosphere, uh, it has a lot of gases to move around. So it is also going to create winds. Now, what is actually driving them to move that quickly? I'm not sure I have the answer to that. Do you, Talia? Uh, I, I'm not actually sure, but I do know that uh, uh, hot air actually can tend to tend to move faster just because it's uh, it's less dense than colder air. So I think possibly that could be uh, contributing to it, but that is a guess. Yeah, that that would make sense. I also since since the atmosphere is so thick, the density changes quickly too as you go, move through the atmosphere. So I wonder if that might have anything to do with it too. We also we have a question, uh, Katie. Do you happen to know? Um, the Da Vinci mission, is that a reference to a Ninja Turtle or the Red <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to guess maybe not the Ninja Turtle. I would guess the Renaissance artist. Also, fun fact, um, the people who come up with the um, names of these uh, missions, well, that some of the stuff they come up with is just hilarious. I wish it was that. We should have a whole series of, of spacecraft named after the Ninja Turtles. That'd be fun. I think it's a good idea. All right. That is the last question we have. Thank you, uh, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for your questions. Um, we hope you have enjoyed learning about Venus, about past exploration, and about the upcoming missions, which we are very, very excited about because Venus has been neglected for way too long. Uh, yep. Katie, would you like to say your farewell? Yes. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Hope you had fun. See you next week. So yes, and if you do want to join us next week, we're going to be talking about some missions to uh, the moons of the outer solar system, specifically uh, the upcoming missions, um, Europa Clipper and Dragonfly. So tune in. We've been focusing this week on the inner solar system. We're going to be in the outer solar system next week. We hope you'll join us then. Until then, uh, you can see all of our virtual offerings at mls.org slash mls at home. And uh, we hope to see you again next week. In the meantime, keep learning because science never stops. Bye, everybody.